Dominic and I'm here at the Great American Songbook Foundation with my friend Izzy who is a Songbook Academy alum and we're here to explore the output of Meredith Wilson, one of the most unusual figures from the Great American Songbook. And the thing that really makes him stand out from many of the other composers from the Songbook is the fact that he worked with such a level of success and profile across different genres of music. So we've just heard a song from his first Broadway musical, The Music Man, which opened in 1957, just after West Side Story had opened. And in actual fact, it was the big hit of the season. It ran almost twice as long as West Side Story. It won most of the awards of that season. And yet it was his first show, and he was 55 years old, which is an impressive achievement, except the reason that he was 55 years old is he'd had so much success before that doing other things. So for example, if we look at the score here, an orchestral score, we can see that it is the manuscript of his Symphony No. 1, written in 1936 and dedicated to the city of San Francisco. And he was supposedly inspired by the building of the Golden Gate Bridge. He was overlooking this when um, he was writing the symphony and that was the inspiration for it. And although I guess in classical music terms it's not the most remarkable or cutting edge piece of music, it does have one curious feature, which is that it's scored for four saxophones in addition to a normal symphony orchestra. And therefore it's a really fascinating piece of creativity. It was premiered by the San Francisco Symphony Orchestra and he conducted it. And so, um, bringing all of these things together, we can see that 20 years before The Music Man, he'd already done something extraordinary. Before that, he'd played the piccolo and the flute in John Philip Sousa's band and in the New York Philharmonic during perhaps its greatest period, certainly its greatest period before the Bernstein years, when Toscanini was its principal conductor. And so, yet again, we can see him working in a remarkable space of quality. Later on, he started writing popular songs. And during the Second World War, he started working on a film called The Great Dictator, which was um, significant for being written by and directed by and starring Charlie Chaplin. And I think Wilson and Chaplin don't seem to have got on particularly well, but they collaborated on the score. And if we look at um, some sketches that we have in the Foundation archives, we can see um, Wilson beginning to develop some themes that Chaplin seems to have given him. So, for example, this is a theme I'm seeing here at the top of the page. And it just finishes like that. And then a couple of pages later, we suddenly see something much more developed, which I probably can't play very accurately because it's sort of written on three different lines for an entire orchestra, but it sounds a bit like this. And 
then it finishes there. And that actually made it into the film. The theme is called Osterlich, which was a reference to Austria and Liechtenstein because the film itself was a satire or a, a political statement about the rise of Hitler. Anyway, The Great Dictator was released in 1940, and a year after that, Wilson and Chaplin got together with a lyricist called Eddie DeLange and turned the theme that we've just heard into a 32-bar song. I assume it's 32 bars, I haven't counted, but basically a pop song called Falling Star, which we've dug out of the archives and we're going to hear now. And you should recognise, hopefully, a bit of that music that I was playing from the film has become a pop tune. So 